This is Twit. So this is an app. I'm really cheating on this one because you and I both know about this app. We found out about it Saturday uh, when we were doing the new screensavers. We had a great guest of the new screensavers talking about uh, camera phones. He was from DP Review. I've forgotten his name, however. I want to say Rishi, but I can't remember his name. Anyway, uh, uh, we should find it because I want to give him credit for this. He told us about an app that blew my mind. In fact, frankly, I was distracted for the rest of the show because I couldn't stop playing with Focus. Now, it's not spelled the traditional way. It's F-O-C. Rishi Sanyal. Rishi. Rishi Sanyal. Sanyal, that's it. Uh, thank you for looking that up. It's spelled F-O-C-O-S. And I put it immediately in my camera folder, which is loaded with all kinds of fun cameras. F-O-C-O-S. Now, what's great about this is you can use it and take a picture now, or you can take an existing picture and play with it. It takes, it's one of the few apps on the uh, iPhone, not, by the way, need the uh, dual camera. Uh, it doesn't have to be an iPhone 10, it can be an iPhone 8 or an iPhone 7, I think. But it's but I, it's using the spatial information that the dual camera gets. I'm going to use this photo because it's um, invalid depth data. So it has to have the depth data. There you go. So this is the photo as taken. First thing I'm going to change is the aperture. So as if you're a photographer, you know that the aperture is the how wide the opening is. And when the opening is very narrow, it's like a pinhole camera. Everything is in focus. Lisa's in focus. The background's in focus. That's really not a great portrait, generally. You want to use the, the depth, what's called depth of field, how, to, to point the viewer in a direction. And you do that by, by opening up, and you can open it up all the way to f1.4, which puts the background out of focus. Whoa. So you get a choice. This is all because the iPhone is recording all this depth information that I can do that. But that's just the beginning. I can also change the shape. They call this stuff in the background, the blurry stuff in the background, bokeh. It's a Japanese word, B-O-K-E-H. And it's what distinguishes in portraits anyway, a great portrait from a kind of mediocre portrait is, is, a, is a shallow depth of field. But the bokeh also, bokeh also tells you something about the lens you can choose a different kinds of dots behind you. Now, these are subtler changes that you might... Yeah, you can kind of see that one, right? Uh, you can have a, a big dot. You can have a blurry dot. Uh, but you also can have an apple dot. You see, there's little apples oh. there. There's an airplane. <laughs> see little airplanes? Right, that's what he was talking about, the onion ring bokeh. yeah. So uh, that is done. Sometimes photographers will do that, shooting through a, uh, a, a uh, cutout. Hmm. But that's really not the best effect. You, hearts might be fun for your, your wife. She might not notice them right away. Hmm. That, but that's not all. We're not done. You can also choose a variety of lenses, including some classic lenses. So this is, for instance, the Carl Zeiss. Oops, let's go back. The Carl Zeiss. Uh, Otis, which is a very famous, very fast lens. And it will give you Otis-like bokeh. Uh, there's a Minolta. Here's an A1. So it's going to change the bokeh. That's because the bouquet, I always say bokeh, because I don't want you to think of a bouquet of roses, but it's pronounced bouquet. But bo I'll say bouquet. You know, as long as you understand that we're talking about the blurriness in the background. The bouquet uh, is affected by the, the, the leaves in the shutter, the actual physical way of the shutter. So changing the lens changes that. We can also, once when we're in aperture, change highlights. We can change the, 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 this is only the background, not the foreground. We can even change the rotation on the background so the hearts are rotated. Uh, I can go to the magic wand effect, and this is really kind of eye-opening. Because it has the depth information, I'll rotate it so you get a sense of what we're looking at. That's the picture. This is the picture front on. This is as we rotate through the picture, the different depth information that the camera has. This is how it's able to do that. Did you take this photo originally in portrait mode or not? Uh, no, I don't. Th you do have to? Okay. Yeah, so you have to take it in portrait mode so it'll record that depth information, uh, John is telling us. So once you do this, you can change where the bokeh, bokeh happens. 
okay, which is kind of interesting too. You're going to want to play with these. Some of these are not going to make a lot of sense to you. But I have to say, the effect is amazing. They also have, um, and he mentioned this, uh, Rishi mentioned this when he talked about us on the show, uh, that you can also do um, a, a really cool effect. Let's see if I can find it. I forgot where it is, though. Uh, a really cool effect that um, you do with, uh, say, a lens baby. What's it called? I forgot. Tilt shift. They have tilt shift in here. I'm trying to remember where the tilt shift is. There's tilt shift in here too. And that the, what tilt shift does, it makes uh, objects uh, appear to be toys. You have to take them from a distance. It wouldn't work with this. But if I took a picture from uh, up, up top of a building, you could use tilt shift to create a very cool effect that it makes it actually look like uh, little toys. This is a very fun app. It's called Focus. Uh, you can play with a lot of other things as well. Uh, but I think mostly what you're going to want to do is play with the bokeh and try different kinds of bokeh till you get the ideal shot. You can see with without the depth information, this isn't a great shot because you can't tell that Lisa's wearing a crown. But with the depth information, it puts the background out and the crown takes uh, takes shape. And you can actually play with this to improve the effect really a neat program that gives you it's interesting for two reasons one it's another great effect in your toolkit but also it gives you a, a lot more information about what apple's doing uh in portrait mode about the depth information it's just amazing is this tilt shift this is a was a hipstamatic filter on my screen yeah that, it's um, trying to do tilt shift I it's not so. a it's not a very effective hilt, tilt yeah. shift um where is it it's in the uh, all far right. Is that tilt shift? Oh, I can add the effect here. Doy. So let me let me show you that. So um, let's go back to her uh, original picture. And we're going to go to uh, effects. Click the magic wand. We're going to add an effect. And then tilt shift. There's bokeh. Bokeh, but there's also tilt shift and motion blur. Let's hit tilt shift. And now you can say which part is going to yeah. be out of focus, which part's in focus. It's not going to be, as I said, great with uh, this picture. But if you had a picture that was... Here, th this one, I think, is more tilt shift. Yeah. Kind of, yeah. What tilt shift does is it puts... Uh, it, it tricks your mind. It puts uh, one of the little toy cars in f clear focus and the rest out of focus. That's, that, aggress it's, that effect isn't that visible there because it's not quite as uh, extreme but if you made it more extreme it would um, i might have some pictures that are suitable for tilt shifting it's nice because focus gives you the pictures that you used uh the portrait mode in so you can see i don't actually use portrait mode all that much so you can only you'll only get to change the pictures yeah i don't have my i use portrait almost entirely on people's faces oddly enough let's see what i can do with you yeah see there's too much of you and too little of the background to really um, make much of a difference here. It's it's a just really uh, worth getting. F O C O S and um, I what's the I think is it free with in-app purchases? I'm trying to remember. I believe so. I ended up uh, buying it immediately, spending all the money immediately. <laughs> it was just it's just really a cool app. F O C O S. Now again though. You're going to have to have a, an Apple phone that supports portrait mode, which means a dual lens Apple phone, iPhone 7, 8, or 10. Works really nicely with a 10.